All right then, let's give this a shot. So the first thing you want to do if you want to learn HTML is create an HTML file. Let's label this index.html, very traditional. And you can do this with any text editor, but we're going to go with Atom. And let's start it off with a hello world. Make sure we save that. And open with your choice of browser. We're going to try Firefox today. And look at that, hello world. Now that wasn't too impressive, but we can do more. And we're going to start off with our first HTML tag. HTML is actually a markup language which allows you to use tags like this to create visual effects. And look at that, now it's in bold. And let's try a few more things. Now normally when you start off a document, you put in this, which tells the browser that you're writing in HTML, not XHTML or so on and so forth, but the modern HTML5. We have a head which goes, you can guess it, above the body. And keep in mind here it's normal to indent these in such a manner that you can actually you know read what you're writing and up in the head we normally have something like a title so first app so now when we reload this it says on the title uh, the tab first app, our title there. Let's move on to a header. So there's various headers. Uh, start off. We also have H2, H3. Let's try an H3. All the way up to H6. And you will see in a moment which is the largest. So H1 is the largest, going down to H6. Now some other useful things. Up here we can put a style tag. And Adam's a little funky about HTML, doesn't properly indent these, but unless you add in some supplements, but will do. Now we can format things like headers or bold, and we can put say H1 and say font size, let's go real big, we'll go 4 rem. Now 1 rem is basically your standard text size. That's if you go into Google Chrome or Firefox and you go to the settings, you can set a default text size. It'll be 12 pixels or 20 pixels, 25 pixels, maybe 32 pixels if your eyesight isn't so good anymore. Now, 1 rem is going to be that standard, so 4 rem will be four times that standard. much bigger. And we can also zoom in. So over here you can see our zoom, got it at 150% there. And if you set it to rem, you know, everything tends to work out. It's, uh, it's usually, usually the way to go for most things. Uh, there are other values like EM, which is sort of an older version of rem. 
I wouldn't suggest using it anymore except in some very small use cases. There's pixels. If you want to be pixel perfect, you could say 12 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Now if we go back to 100% zoom, that's pretty small. Uh, it's used to be the standard, but resolution sizes have changed over the years. So generally you want to go with the one rem and that sets it to uh, whatever the default is. Well, one rem for normal text. Um, say a paragraph tag would be font size one rem. But an H1, uh, typically, it's more like two, two and a half. And we can put a paragraph around this bold text here. And you can put this on another line if you like or not. So what this will do is, first I'll set that H1 back to a more normal size and it'll put in then we can add text indent so you saw that just jump a little ways to the right now so you can make this look like uh, your normal word document if you wanted to but let's say we want to do something a little more extreme so Oh, and you can also open up this inspector. Well, we'll get we'll get to that later. Text align center. And look at that. You've got text in the middle of the screen now. Or all the way over to the right. But we'll keep that in the middle for now. And if we use a comma here, we can also apply this to H2. Now you wouldn't want to apply the font size, but we can apply the text align. And then all those header elements will jump right to the middle. Another useful thing, we can style the body. Now this one will also put font size 1 rem and what's interesting about this is that the various header elements and whatever else you put in here will override that but this will set sort of a base for the rest of the document. So this won't actually change anything in this case. But more importantly, we're going to put some padding here. Now let's, let's put some extra padding. Uh, yeah, we'll go with we'll go with 3 rem for now. In this case, you generally actually want to use something more like a percentage rather than RAM, but we'll keep it simple for now. So if you noticed here, this jumped, uh, this hello world on the left jumped a little to the right, and these all jumped a little bit downwards because now there is an invisible space padding all the content inwards. And we can see that if we open up this uh, control shift I will get you to the console and then we can just go to the inspe inspector you can get there uh, actually with um, control shift C if you want to use hotkeys uh, and then if you click right here you can hover over this this is the body okay you can go here and that purple space there uh, I believe it's colored differently in Chrome, but it's roughly the same thing. Shows you the current padding. So, 
we can actually even change this right in here. This won't save it to your document, so it'll change as soon as you refresh the page. But it's useful for prototyping very quickly. So let's say we change this to 5 rem or 10 rem. Or we can go 10%. But for now, let's put this back at, well, let's use pixels for a change. Go with 25 pixels. And that gives us that little box that keeps our text from getting too close to the edges. Now, some more things. Let's try a list. So we'll go with an ordered list for now. And let's say we're going to label this as things I like to eat. And so this OL means ordered list which means it's going to have some numbers on it. And let's say pumpkin. And we can go with another one. Pears. And a final one, number three, apples. And don't forget to close your tags, otherwise it can cause unexpected things to happen. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, but let's move that H3 back to the left, shall we? So we'll just take out that. Oh, sorry, that was an H2, my mistake. There we go. Now you have a nice list and a label. But let's say someone comes along, maybe they don't like your apples. You can do more than just tell people. Text and style it. You can even create activities, interactivity. So we're going to go with an on click here. And this is just a simple one, so we'll leave it right here in the text. This dot remove. I bet you can guess what that might do. Now when we click this, it disappeared. It's like magic. So one way to do this add this to all the others. Now, just to explain a little bit of what's going on here, the this here refers to the element, the li, the list item, which means this whole thing right here. Now remove is a method, or in this case it's a function method. And these parentheses tell it to activate that function, to do that action, which in this case removes it. So now we can just click, click, yep, and there. Whoever's on your page was able to edit to just the things they like to eat. You might be able to imagine some other ways you can use <coughs> that sort of interactivity. But you might have noticed that when we hover over this, it's showing a text cursor. Now, no one's going to guess that they can click an item and make it disappear if you have a text cursor. So, we're going to try something special here. We 
we're going to set the cursor for this item to a pointer. So now when you hover over this, and let me just zoom in for people to see a little better, you can see that it changes the mouse cursor to the pointer, which tells people that there's something to click. But we can even do a little bit better. Now this is a hover modifier, which tells it to do a different sort of style when the mouse is over it. So we're going to say color red. Now when we hover over it, it changes color. Now this site feels alive in a way that the original site didn't. HTML will get you a long ways, but then you have to add in the CSS, which is that style tag, and the onclick, which is JavaScript. And now we get to the title of this video, which is Learning HTML5, which is a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. <clears throat> And now it is 10 o'clock at night, and I think I'm losing my voice. So we're going to call this one done for now, and I hope you show up to the next one.